You know, the word that I have that, that the Lord really placed upon my heart today to share is about prayer. And I know I'm speaking to the choir here. I know a lot of you have your prayer warriors. But see, God is saying, I want to take you higher. He wants to take us to a whole nother level because the Lord has need of us. And I was thinking during worship of Purim, you know, we just celebrated Purim and how Haman had planned to take out the Jews. But see, God had a different plan. And there was a reversal that took place. There's divine reversals that are taking place in our own lives. But listen, we have to pray for our nation. We have to pray for what's happening out there. God, the Lord has need of us. And that's what I want to talk about today because, you know, the Lord said to me, I want to release a prayer, a revolutionary prayer movement, if we can say it like that. And so, um, and we have the, the dunamis power in Acts 1.8. It says that he has given us power. Right? And so we had, and that word do, power there is dunamis, and it means dynamite. We had that dynamite power within us, and so it has to be activated. Now, I know we're praying, but the Lord says, now I want you to take it to a whole nother level, and that's what we're going to talk about. Because you may think, what's happening to the light? Oh, let there be light. <laughs> You may think that your prayers don't mean anything. You may think that your prayers aren't make, you know, creating breakthrough, but that's the lie of the enemy. So prayer, prophetic intercession, you know, making this divine request before the Lord is powerful. And the enemy is fearful of it because he knows the difference it makes within our lives. Amen? How many of you here can say that prayer has changed things within your lives, that you have seen miracle working power take place? And so, but the, you know, uh, during worship on Friday, I mean, how many of you were there with Chuck Pierce? Wasn't that awesome? It was just so powerful meeting at the war memorial. And like he said, we are in war. And we can't be afraid of what's happening. We have to know our God. And the Bible says in, D in Daniel that we will know our God and we shall do great exploits for him. Amen? And so that's what the Lord wants us to decree. He wants us to, to get the downloads from him in knowing how to pray because, again, you know, uh, the Lord has need of us. And, and you know, we, 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 in our intercessors, we always talk about Reese Howell's book called Intercessor. And, and they changed the world. They, they changed. They were, there was a marked difference. And you need to read the book if you've never read it. Reese, it's called Intercessor by Reese Howells. He had, they, they prayed and they were getting downloads and strategies from the Lord to overthrow the, Nazi, uh, the Nazis that were uh, you know, trying to overtake England. I mean, it's powerful. We have that ability. Do you hear me? And that's, that's the, the pressure or, or the, uh, well, <laughs> the power and pressure the Lord's been placing upon my heart. I remember when I first got saved, there was a book that was out there called uh, Atom Atomic Power Through Prayer and Fasting. Now, I got saved in 79, and that book was just out there. And it was written in the 40s, but it really caught my attention, and I thought, wow, we can make that much of a difference, you know, like an atomic bomb breaking through in the spirit realm to create change. That's what we have. So we're going to get rid of all of our unbelief. We're going to get rid of all the, you know, doubt that we have in our heart and recognize that we are sons and daughters of the king and that we have the dynamite resurrection power residing within us. You know, some may think, well, oh, these people are a little crazy. Yeah, I am. I'm fanatical for Jesus because the Bible says in Revelations, you're either hot or you're cold. And I'd rather be hot for the kingdom of God. And I'd rather buy that, go that salve that he says for our eyes so that we will be refined in the refiner's fire and that the Lord purges us of this doubt, of unbelief, of fear, whatever it is that we've been struggling with so that we can hear and that we can pray and we can make a difference in Acts. It says that they turned the world upside down. We're no different than them. In the book of James, it says that Elisha was a man with like passions like us. No different. What's the difference? It's mindsets. And so that's the thing that the Lord has placed upon my heart. Listen, the fact that James is free for 90 days of drug and alcohol, that's, that's huge, right? I mean, how many of us are free from addictions that have gotten free from strongholds that the enemy has placed upon our lives? But you see, there's someone greater in us. The Bible says greater. 
Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And see, my vision and my prayer is that we be those radical people that turn the world upside down. Our government needs prayer. We need to shift what's happening. I'm not going to allow ungodly rule dictate my life and what's happening in my nation and my state. We have that right to pray. That's why we need a prayer revolution. That's why we have to rise up. See, God's going to break us out of complacency. He's going to break us out of lethargy and passivity. And so, Lord, right now I pray that any kind of a film, anything that's been over us, that has caused us to withdraw and not go forward and not press forward in prayer, Lord, we break that thing off of us, oh God. Lord, I know that you've placed this upon our hearts, that we follow hard after you, and that we are obedient to the word of the Lord, oh God. Lord, we're not just a people turning, attending church. We're a people that's in your army that you've called us to make a difference. So, Lord, we say yes to the call. And I wrote here that the disciples said to Jesus, teach us how to pray. They didn't say, and we do it here, they didn't say, teach us how to cast out devils. Teach us how to raise the dead. He said, they said, teach us to pray. Why? Because they saw the miracle working power that he operated in. They saw the dead raised. They saw words of knowledge and people getting healed and delivered. We are no different than that. The church that has become so passive and dead is not the church that God has called us to be. That's over. And the enemy loves that. That's been his plan all along. All these people are so wild and crazy. That's right. That's right, when they need prayer, they call us, right? You know, you can go to your one-hour service, but let me tell you, we get the calls here. So the disciples, they observed their devotion, Jesus' devotion to prayer. And they, he saw, they saw the mountains move. They saw breakthrough. They saw change. They saw the demoniac get delivered and healed. Oh, my God, do we ever need that? This craziness with this cancel culture and transgender and man you're either a girl or you're a boy honey I, I got news for you <laughs> there's there's no confusion here you got the parts you're a boy or a girl and so <laughs> sorry <laughs> the Lord says he wants a revelation to take place we are the remnant we have to stand up and we have to make a difference we can't listen it's a minority who believes that I'm telling you it's a minority Jesus is saying, church, rise up. And I'm not saying be crazy. I'm saying have strategy, have wisdom, know how to, how to pray, know how to, and then be active, and then step out in faith, right? Oh, my Lord, when you hear some of this stuff, I'm like, Lord, I have to just turn it off, click. I have to hear what the Lord's saying because you want to get depressed and suicidal, listen to the news. But, see, but that's the plan of the enemy. So when we partner with God, we have that mountain-moving ability to create change. And see, so it comes from the altar. It comes from spending time with him. It comes from decreeing the word. And, I, and again, I know you know this. And so how many times, you know, some of you may be new here and, you know, you're driving along and you get a, a picture of somebody or, you know, you're just prompted to, like, I keep seeing this person. Well, the Lord's trying to tell you, you're getting prophetic intercession. He wants you to pray. You know, that we hear from the Lord, that we're dialoguing, that we talk with the Lord all day long. And so, you know, I, I just know that God is just releasing over us a double portion. And that he wants us to, to, to really hear him and press in and wait upon him. We sing those songs about waiting upon the Lord, right? And that, um, you know, we just, we just want to wait and hear. And, and that's the thing that the Lord's been saying to me. He's, it's so easy to get distracted, isn't it? You know, and, and it can be all good distractions. You know, you have your, your Bible app, you have this thing open, and you're reading. The Lord said, but just put all it away. Just, just, I want you to read the word. He says, but I just want you to sit before me. I want you to hear what I'm saying. I want you to get the wisdom and the strategies. I want you to, to allow me to purge you. You know, we do have, there are a lot of hurting people, like James says, and we don't take that lightly. We know that people are struggling, and it's not like, oh, just, you know, get over it. You know, I've been told that. Just trust God and get over it, and the spirit of smack wants to rise up. He's like, I'm trying to get over it, you know, but I don't know how to get over it. But see, one of the ways is through prayer, and then, you know, worshiping and getting in the word, but then we have prayer counseling. I mean, we do a lot of that here, and, and, you know, but I didn't know. I, you know, 
you know, many of us, we suffered with the rebellion or depression or fear and all that. I had it all. <laughs> I had it all. And so I didn't know how, but it was little by little. But I'll tell you, there's power in the Word of God. Because I didn't know where to go to church. I was denominational. And, um, you know, I started to read the Bible. And I've shared this many times at our church. And, and I read little booklets and Ken Hagen, Ken Copeland, all these people. And how to get free. Or, or just to read the Bible to understand what the book was about. Because I had King James. I didn't know what in the world I was reading. <laughs> but I'll tell you, I started seeing miracles right away. It's childlike faith. It's not something that we have to, you know, pray like, you know, 42 years before we see God move. It's childlike faith. It's the Bible says it's impossible to please the Lord, what, without faith. When he comes back, he says, well, I find faith on the earth. See, that's the thing that the enemy's been after is our faith. And so we get discouraged. We get disheartened by situations. We get bogged down. The Lord's saying, listen, just run to the altar. Get on your faces before me. Pray, worship. Is he not a miracle working God? He's our designer. Do you not think that he knows how to deal with all of us here? So I had written out uh, some quotes, and I'm going to read them all. I, I know you guys have, a, have it up there, I think. But one of the quotes from Martin Luther about prayer, it says, To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. Hudson, Hudson Taylor a wonderful missionary from China says, it is possible to move men through God by prayer alone. Prayer changes things. We know that. To get our, na listen, Billy Graham, I love this. To get nations back on their feet, we must get down on our knees. We need our nation to get back in alignment with the spirit of God. Because this is not who we we're called to be. We will not be a socialist country. And we will not be led by but you said it, I didn't. So, and Andrew Murray said, prayer is not a monologue, but a dialogue. God's voice is its most essential part. Listening to God's voice is the secret of assurance that he will listen to mine. He listens to us. He loves us. He wants to hear us. You know, and to desire revival and at the same time to neglect personal prayer are, and devotion is to wish one way and walk another. And lastly, in, by Andrew Murray Beware in your prayers above everything else of limiting God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Read Psalm 78. He does not want us to live in him. Not only by unbelief, but by fancying that you know what he can do. Expect ex uh, unexpected things above all that we ask or think. Come on, how many times do we limit God? Because we try to understand. We try to figure him out. But it's spirit. Spirit to spirit. We're not going to understand everything that he says. It, I mean, by our natural mindset. But then he starts to give us revelation as you cultivate that with him. See, we have to break out of unbelief. And we have to break out of, of trying to understand everything. Well, it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, God, that, a lot of stuff doesn't make sense to me. But, but thank God, for God, that he, that he just loves us and he, and he carries us through. I mean, read some of the scriptures. You know, he says, my ways aren't your ways. My thoughts are way above your thoughts, says the Lord. So the Holy Spirit is saying, trust me. We have to get into that trust uh, mode with Holy Spirit. Where you, you know what happens because sometimes of disappointment of un, or, or, or just circumstances in our life, delay, does that not cause you to pull back at times? It's like, man, I've been praying for so long. And then you think, well, forget it. No, persevere. Come on, the Lord's releasing a fresh wind on our prayer life again where he's saying, you call those things which be not as though they are. Prophesy over your life. Prophesy over your circumstances. Don't allow the enemy to dictate and let you think what's right and what's wrong. The Lord, what does the Lord say over your circumstance, right? He has final say. The greater ones within us. See, we have to get our faith elevated and believe. We've had too many miracles. We have seen too many amazing things that God has done. And many of us here can testify and get up and share of how God delivered us, how God healed us supernaturally, of how God turned our family situation around, of how God supernaturally provided funds for us. Amen? What do you think? He's going to stop now? 
The Bible says he knows the end from the beginning. He's not surprised by anything that's happening. He's saying, but I'm looking for my remnant. I'm looking for my remnant that will take a stand, that will get activated, go on the school boards, that will get out in there and into the government issues, into the media areas, and speak the life of Christ and speak truth and be a light. That makes a difference. Our voice, our, we're voice activated. We're in the era of pay, and you know that. Ten years of pay of our mouth, of our decrees. What's coming out of your mouth? Is it liberalism? Is it defeat? Is it anti, you know, Christ th theology? What is it? Is it the word of God? See, when you pray, listen, if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit, we're happy to pray for you. That's the most important thing is to get filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and I, you know, you can have a dialogue about what you believe. I'm just telling you the Holy Spirit was given to us to be radioactive, powerful, atomic bomb people. That's what Holy Spirit's all about. We have got to get and stop trying to analyze the Bible. What's for today? And what's He wants us to have it all. Why would, he ha why would he call us here and say we're dunamis power Christians and then we have nothing to help, uh, you know, uh, us walk in that power and authority that he's given us? I mean, come on, that doesn't make sense to me. I want it all. And it comes from us waiting on him. It comes from us pressing into the Lord. And complacency or passivity is one of the most dangerous enemies of the believer. I'm telling you. He wants to lull us all to sleep. James said, wake up. He was awakened. Well, that's one of the scriptures I'm going to read. It, you know, we, we, we can be in this false place of security but, see, when we, when we prophesy and when we have words, I mean, I had a dream in the summer that this, the, I don't know if any of you remember when I released it, that the shelves in the, in the food stores are going to be empty. Well, we're praying opposite, but what did Mr. Biden just recently say? There's going to be a food shortage. See, the Lord always reveals it first to his people, to his prophets, right? And so, Lord, we just pray that there will be no sort of sh sh food shortage and, and that your people will be people in Goshen, that there will be provision in Jesus' name. See, see, we counter it with the word. We counter it in prayer. And so the Lord also spoke to me and he said, listen, I want, all right, so one of the definitions for passivity is lacking in energy or will to be lethargic, indifferent. See, if there's any indifference in us, we have to shake ourselves out of that. If there's any detachment or you're unresponsive because you get so frustrated with everything, it's like, you know, it's just like, what, what's this going to, am I going to make a difference? I have thought that. Anybody here thought that when you're praying? Yeah. Oh, brother. You know, but the, what does Psalms 2 say? I sit, he sits on his throne, he laughs. Right? He laughs at the plans, the derision of the enemy. And I said, Lord, you know what, James, I mean, the book of Job, chapter 5 says that we shall laugh at calamity and destruction. You see, but here's the spirit of the Lord. He's saying, listen, I want to break any kind of barrenness that's been in your prayer life. And, and, and barrenness, as you know, means to, when I looked it up in the Bible, because so many of the patriarchs' wives were all barren. Isn't that interesting? And they had to persevere. They had to pray. They had to press through to break that barrenness. There's been barrenness over our cities. There's been barrenness over, well, let's start with our families and our own lives, then our cities and our nation. God says we have the ability and the know with all to break that spirit of barrenness. That's not who we are. We're people that are fertile in the spirit. So we want, it says, it meant to, to miscarry, to be robbed. Listen to this. To destroy, fail to bear fruit, to be attacked, to be parched non-productive well i said i reject all that i'm not gonna have that in my life to, uh, like I, and i was thinking about it spiritual infertility well that's not who we are we are people who are fertile as i said in the spirit realm and so there's a new new breed that god is raising up and it's the remnant i don't care what your situation has been I don't care that if you have struggled and you've struggled with prayer. I don't care if you've been an addict. I don't care if you've been an alcohol. I don't care if you've been in fear. Today's a change, day of change. I'm telling you, Haman had the gallows built. And it looked like the Jews or those people, Mordecai and Esther, they looked like they were all going to get hung. But the enemy, it, it turned around on him. 
and the Lord says, cut your losses. Stop looking in your rearview mirror and looking at what's been. Come on, you have to now move forward and say, you know what, God? You've got me. You love me. You have your breakthrough anointing. Listen, it's not always so easy. It's like I wish, you know, well, listen, I believe we're coming to a place where we see the suddenlies like this for everything. But, but, we're, but we're not there yet, right? <laughs> but God. But see, I'm not looking at what hasn't. I'm looking at the God, you know, when you see, in, I love the book of Daniel, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went through the fire, and they were thrown in, and they said, we are not bowing to you, Nebuchadnezzar. See, we can't bow to the dictates of things that are contrary to the word of God. And they said, we will not bow to you. And he was ticked off, and he made it seven times hotter. And then he looked in, and he said, whoa, there's a fourth man in the fire. He said, I thought we threw three in. He goes, but there was a fourth man in the fire. They, were, they didn't smell like folk, smoke. They weren't singed. They weren't burned. They weren't injured. That's the God we serve. But see, we have to break limitations off of the way we think and say, wait a minute, you are the God of the supernatural. We sang about Jehovah Jireh. We sang about the God of the impossible. He is the great I am. He is the ancient of days. Come on, we have to get back to meditating on who our God is not the gods of this world but who is our God to us right he's the God Luke 137 is the scripture that the Lord got a hold of me with is that with God it says nothing nada nand nothing shall be called impossible basta nothing that's what the word says and I, and I choose to believe that I'm not going to try to understand everything I just know that he's brought me through hell and back and he's brought a lot of healing and deliverances. So the enemy will do anything he can do to discourage our faith. But we can't. He'll undermine relationships. He'll, he'll, he'll just try to bring division like he did with COVID, with the vaccinated, with the unvaccinated. Church, come on. We got to repent where there has been disunity because of that. Is not our God a God who heals us? We're going to be afraid? To be around people and now they're lifting all the mandates anyhow so <laughs> I guess that's uh, well, anyway so you know we're just going to trust the Lord and we're going to press through we have listen and I'm not making light of if you really were fearful over this but that the Holy Spirit just shows us where we're at so that we get healing listen none of us are walking on water yet and so that's the thing we just want Lord you know what show me where I'm at a lot of times we know it and we make excuses for it but the excuse making time is over. We have to say, wait a second, Lord. <laughs> I want you to show me my heart. I want you to expose the root systems within me. I want, to sh I want you to shine your light on me. Give me a Holy Ghost scan, an x-ray scan. Show me really where I'm at. I don't want to be a racist. I don't want to be one that's in fear and prejudice. I don't want to have anger and unbelief. Come on, we all have stuff. But it's time that we say, wait a minute, forgive me. Lord, you know what? Forgive me, because that's not going to change things. The Lord is looking. We don't want an open door in our lives. God wants us to look at him and say, God, the enemy has nothing in me. And I'm praying, and I'm believing for breakthrough. Amen? Amen. And so listen, you know, the scripture says in, um, well, James 4, 2, you do not have because you do not ask. You ask for nothing because you ask for nothing passionately. When I looked it up, you know, because I, I know the scripture, it says you ask amiss. And then when I looked it up, it means you don't ask for it passionately. That's a big difference in just asking. I'm not going to just ask and pray. I'm going to persevere and get on my face and wait on the Lord for the direction of each step I need to take for that breakthrough to come. See, the Lord today, and I'm going to pray this when I end, but I'll just say it now because I'm thinking of it. He's commissioning us to be prayer warriors to be the prophetic intercessors, to decree that thing that we get together and we pray and we have an expectation of breakthrough. I'm not talking fa fantasy. I'm talking fact of what we can do and what the Lord is commissioning us to do. I mean, I know many of us are burdened by what's going on. And we're the answer. Amen? So in, in Hebrews chapter 6, I know, I gave them, my husband helped me with a, a handout, and I just go off, and it's just so hard for me to follow. Thank you. So, listen to this. It says, it's unconditional just, love, darling. Amen, Don't brother. Worry. Thank you. 
And we desire for each one of you to show the same diligence all the way through so as to realize and enjoy the full assurance of hope until the end. Here's what I want. So that you will not be spiritually sluggish. See, we break that off. We will not be spiritually sluggish, Lord, but will instead be imitators of those who through faith lean on God with absolute trust and confidence in him. Ooh, Jesus. Do you have trust and confidence in him? And in his power and by patient endurance, even when suffering are now inheriting the promises. We have been suffering. There's, it's been awful these past couple years. But God, but we're not going to be sluggish. We're not going to be spiritually sluggish. We are in recovery, and we are recovering all. We are rec Listen, sometimes we like to talk more about our problems, about what God can do. And if you find, check yourself. If that's all you're talking about, well, guess what? You're going to be depressed. We have to learn to shift. It's not that we're in denial. It's like, Lord, I, here's my situation. You know, write your letter out. But here's what your word says. Now, Lord, I'm thanking you for a breakthrough. I'm thanking you for that power and authority you've given me. See, that's, that's what I've learned early on. I didn't have 14 years of, of Bible college or anything like that. When I first got saved, I just believed the word. I'm like, this is what, this is what the word's saying. And then you experience it. It's simple, childlike faith. But open up your heart of expectation to believe what the word of the Lord is saying. Now, Ephesians 5.14 in the NIV, there you go, says, wake up, <laughs> wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. If there's any area of your heart, I say, Lord, wake me up in every area of my heart that went to sleep because of disappointment, because of delay, because of waiting, because of warfare, wake me up. See, that's our cry, Lord. Wake us up, oh God. Let us be alert. Let us be alive in the realm of the Spirit where we are hearing your word, where we are getting direction from what you're saying, Lord. Let us be awakened and not lulled to sleep because the enemy likes people who are lulled to sleep because then he gets over on you. There's such a spirit of deception that's in this world right now. And we bind that spirit. But the Bible says that in end times there will be a spirit of deception. But, but the very elect can get deceived, right? I'm not above that. Lord, please, keep me on the right path. I don't want to be deceived. That's why we need a community of people. That's why we need to be around each other to help each other. All right? So my utter dependence is upon the Lord. And what does the Lord say? Not what the other people are saying or situations are saying. Amos 6.1, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says, Woe to those who are at ease in Zion. And to those on the mountain of Samaria who are careless and feel secure, the notable men of the chief, because chosen by God of the nations, to whom the house of Israel comes. Listen, the Israelites lost their sense of urgency. And what happens is, in, when you go down, and like that's what I'm not going to read. It, they went into captivity. See, I'm not, I'm not going into captivity. Mm -mm, not going into captivity. And so, 1 Samuel 12, 20, uh, 12, 1 Samuel 12, 23, it says, Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. But I will instruct you in your good, in the good and right way. Let me just say this, and I'm going to just uh, go to Acts chapter 12 because I see the time. Um, actually, do we have the disturb us? No, leave that. Leave that. I want to read that Proverbs 8. Sorry. I like that scripture. Proverbs 8. Bless a bossy happy chick, isn't she? What's that? You're a bossy chick sometimes. Hey, hey, take the mic away from him. <laughs> All right. It says here, blessed, happy, and fortunate to be envied is the one who listens to me watching daily at my gate, waiting at the post of my door. Isn't that a good scripture? I love that. But we have to listen watching daily at, our, at the gates. And then um, now I want you, do we have... Oh, we, you didn't do disturb me, did you? Well, then I didn't see it. Okay, that's good. Stay there. Francis Drake, and I'm, I'm going to read this because he didn't do everything I asked him. <laughs> says, listen to this. <laughs> it says, disturb us, Lord. Dis hey, disturb us, Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves. When our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little, 
when we arrived safely because we sailed too close to the shore. Whew. Disturb us, Lord, with the abundance of the things we possess. We have lost our thirst for the waters of life. Having fallen in love with life, we have ceased to dream of eternity, and in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of heaven to grow dim. Oh, disturb us, Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wider seas where storms will show your mastery, and where losing sight of land we shall find the stars. We ask you to push back the horizons of our hope and to push us into the future in strength, courage, hope, and love. That's by Francis Drake, and he wrote that in the 1500s. Oh, God, would you disturb us? Would you disturb us, Lord, and not allow us to stay in any place that's not pleasing to you? Oh, God, let us not just stay close to the, to the shoreline, but let us go deep in the depths of, of, of our intimacy with you for strategies and for revelation for what we need for what's ahead. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. So, in Acts chapter 12, I just, I mean, there's so many awesome portions of Scripture. In Acts chapter 12, I can only find, that's how many Scriptures I have here. <laughs> In Acts chapter 12, we know this portion when um, they were, uh, Peter was put in jail, right? Mamma mia, hold on a second here. And so, the people were praying. And this is, this is the power of a praying church. This is what I want to get to today. This is what God's asking us to do. Because there's persecution. And again, we don't have to be afraid of these things. We need to stay close to the Lord. But in Acts chapter 12, it says, During this period, King Herod incited persecution against the church, causing great harms to the believer. There's a Herod spirit that's out here. Wanting to cause great trouble to the church, to the remnant. He even had the apostle Jacob, John's brother, beheaded. When Herod realized how much this pleased the Jewish leaders, he had Peter arrested and thrown into prison during the Feast of Passover, which, by the way, we're going to have on April 10th, Christine Vowles, um, the chalkboard. She, on, on Facebook, she's the chalkboard teacher about you know, Hebraic roots. She'll, she'll be here ministering. 16, listen to this. 16 soldiers were assigned to guard him until Herod could bring him to public trial immediately after the Passover celebration. Do you think that the enemy is afraid of a praying church? Do you think that the enemy is afraid of people of high? We all have power and authority here. It's not just a select group of us. Listen to this. And it says the church, in verse 5, went into a season of intense intercession, asking God to free us. That is where we're at. God is asking us, the church, to get into a place of intense intercession for our families. Listen, you know, we want revival and awakening, but our families need to come into that place, right, in order to have awakening and revival. Then we have our cities and our nation. But the church, they came into a season of intense intercession for the supernatural. And it says here, the night before Herod planned to bring him to trial, he made sure that Peter was securely bound with two chains. Peter was sound, I love this, he's sound asleep. I mean, would you be sound asleep if you knew you were going to get killed the next day? He was sound asleep between two soldiers with additional guards stationed outside the cell door when all at once, here we go, here's the suddenly of the Lord. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, filling his prison cell with a br brilliant light. Woo, Jesus. And so the angel struck, but in the living version, it says the angel slapped him. That's the New Jersey angel. The angel slapped Peter on the side to awaken him and said, hurry up, let's go. Instantly, the chains fell off his wrists, and the angel told him, get dressed and put on your sandals to bring your cloak and follow me. And Peter quickly left his cell and followed the angel, even though he thought it was only a dream or a vision, for it seemed so unreal. He couldn't believe it was really happening. They walked unseen past the first guard post, and then the second, before coming to the iron gate that leads to the city, and the gate swung open all by itself right in front of them. You see, this is what the Lord's saying to us. Stop trying to natu in your natural mind. The Lord is a God of supernatural. And they went out into the city and were walking down a narrow street when all of a sudden the angel disappeared. That's when people, Peter realized that he wasn't having a dream. And he said, wow, this is really happening to me. 
the angel rescued me from the clutches of Herod and from what the Jewish leaders plan to do. The enemy, the Lord is wanting to release us from the clutches of the enemy and what he's planning to do for us. Oh, no, we are going forward. And when he realized this, he decided to go to the home of Mary and her son, John Mark, and the house was filled with people praying. And when he knocked on the door, listen, this, is, this makes sense to me. When he knocked on the door to the courtyard, a young servant girl named Rose uh, got up to see who it was, and when she recognized Peter's voice, she was so excited that she forgot to open the door and ran back inside the house to announce Peter standing outside. They didn't even believe it. But, I mean, right? I mean, help, Lord, help my unbelief, right? Are you crazy, they said to her. But when she kept insisting, they answered, well, it must be his angel. Meanwhile, Peter's still outside knocking. Hello, let me in. And when they finally opened it, they were shocked to find Peter standing there. He signaled for them to be quiet as he shared with them the miraculous way the Lord brought him out of prison. Before he left, he said, make sure you let Jacob and all the other believers know what's happening. I am telling you, this is that. This is where we're at. The spirit of the Lord God is upon us. And he's saying, I want you to pray. I want you to believe for the supernatural. I want you to believe. And that I don't care what the diagnosis has been. I don't care what they're saying about your kid. I don't care about, you know, your financial situations. The Lord's saying, believe me for the suddenlies. Believe me for the strategies that I will give you. But it comes through our prayer. It comes through our dedication. I mean, I'm telling you, God is a God who answers our prayers. Come on, stand Stand up. Amen. The Lord has given us the keys to the kingdom. He's given us that authority. He's given us that power. We don't have to keep asking for it. We got to activate it. We have to do it. Amen. So if you want more, if you're if today, it's not even that you have to have hands laid on you and we'll, we're happy to do that. But if you want to make a statement, say, Lord, I want to come to a whole nother level of praying. I want that mantle of tra prayer, that mantle of travail. Lord, I want to see my nation, my city, my family change. I want that in my life, God. I'm not going to just settle for any old dumb thing that comes my way. I'm taking authority over it, Lord, and I'm getting a download and a strategy from you. Come forward. I don't know about you, but I want it. I want, I said, Lord, I'm not satisfied with where I'm at. Lord, I want, I want to hear from heaven. We are all his sheep. And he says, my sheep hear my voice. But he's saying, listen, I want you to have clarity. We want to get at the distractions in that sound. I want the distractions out. I want the clarity. So, Lord, I just thank you that you love us too much to let us stay where we're at. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for your hovering, your brooding presence over each and every one of us, your implanted word that's within us that causes us to birth anew. Lord, I break off barrenness. I break off spiritual infertility. I take authority over doubt and unbelief that has limited us. But Lord, your word says you are God of the supernatural, of unlimited breakthrough in our lives. So Lord, today, as you said to me that you were commissioning us to a new level, to an increased level, of prayer and authority, of praying and interceding, of expecting breakthrough, of being the ones that will declare the thing that will shift our nation. Lord, we say that we will be the history makers, that we will make that difference. Prayer is inconvenient. I'm telling you right now, prayer is inconvenient. It, he's not going to be concerned about how, how convenient it is for each and every one of us. He wants us to pray in the middle of the night, in the morning, get here early to pray. But so, Lord, we just thank you. Woo, I just feel the presence of the Lord.